What if Minecraft had a dungeon heart? Welcome back to What If, the series where I write a custom mod for every episode just to check out some new ideas that might actually fit into Minecraft. And today we're going to be taking a look at dungeons. Yeah, those dungeons. I'm talking about those pitiful cobblestone boxes that haven't been updated in almost 10 years. I mean, to be honest, I have no idea how they're even called dungeons. It's a plain box of rock with a spawner that you can conquer with a torch. I mean, let's be honest, this is pretty pathetic. So today we're going to completely reinvent Minecraft dungeons. Our new dungeons are gonna be up to nine times larger than vanilla dungeons. They're gonna be procedurally generated in layers so that each dungeon has a completely unique feel. And we're gonna introduce two very interesting blocks as well as a new item. The end goal here is I want each new dungeon to feel like its own little self-contained mini adventure. So these new dungeons will consist of many rooms linked together, all of which will sprout from a center room called the Dungeon Heart. The first room directly adjacent to the heart is what I'm calling the Connector Room, and this is just a filler room where lots of fighting can take place. And then turning left out of the Connector Room will lead you to a Spawner Room, where you'll find a creature spawner and a room themed around that type of creature. Now, these new dungeons will come in one of four tiers. The tier of the dungeon will determine how many wings the dungeon will have. So a tier one dungeon will just have one wing. A tier two dungeon will have two wings, all the way up to a tier four dungeon which will have all four wings and be a total of nine rooms. Now each of these rooms takes up a full 16 by 16 chunk and can be up to seven blocks tall. Once they're designed they're saved into a structure file and just reread in by the dungeon generation process of the mod. So as you can see here this is the world where some of my Patreon supporters and I have created all the room templates that you'll see. You can see over here we have the room connectors, over here we have the dungeon spawner rooms, and then over here we have the line of doors that are used to connect them all together. The best part of this design approach and using structural blocks is that it's super easy to add a new piece of content and get it working in the dungeon generation process. So step one is to get all of these rooms placed together and fitted together in the world in the locations that they belong so that you can walk between them all. Once that's done, I then add a second procedural pass on top of every room where I go ahead and add just a ton of detail. And this detailing pass is done in layers, doing many forms of block randomization and substitution. You can see for yourself here some of the results results along each step of this process as it adds randomization to the floors and ceilings and walls of each room. At the center of every dungeon is the dungeon heart. And this is where the mod really gets its character. What you see here is an upgraded spawner sitting below a chest of new loot, which are both secured behind an arcane wall of force. All four sides are enclosed by this new half block that can't be pushed or broken or moved in any way by players in survival. Surrounding the base of the heart, you'll see four new blocks called arcane locks. And each of these locks are inscribed with a symbolic rune. Now to unlock this block, you'll need to find an arcane rune item that has a matching symbol and it will serve as the key. Once you have the matching arcane rune, simply right click on the arcane lock with the rune in hand and it will change to its unlocked state. However, the barrier around the heart isn't going to drop until all nearby locks are also unlocked. So once all four are unlocked, the arcane wall will slowly fade away at that point and then you'll have access to the spawner and the chest behind. Also, once the arcane wall is down, you can manually break the arcane lock block itself and keep it and use it for your own means and your base, whatever you want. Just be sure to keep the key that came with her, the key that matches it. So of course, the big question remaining is, how do you defeat these new dungeons? How do you drop that arcane wall? Where do you find the new matching arcane rune items? Well, 
It's actually really simple. Each of the locks is pointing to a wing of the dungeon. Simply go into that wing and kill mobs from the spawner room, and within a few minutes, one of those mobs will drop the matching arcane rune to unlock that wing's lock. Now, if a dungeon that you find is less than tier four, meaning it has less than four wings, then some of the arcane locks will already be in the unlocked state. So this all sounds pretty easy, right? Well, sort of. Sort of not. You see, the spawners in this dungeon aren't ordinary vanilla spawners. The ones in the spawner rooms in each wings spawn mobs at a much faster rate and with an increased number of mobs per spawn. The spawner inside the dungeon heart, though, is the real threat. This spawner has an activation range of 32 blocks, has a potential spawn range of 24 blocks, and won't stop spawning mobs until there are 12 mobs from it that are roaming around in the dungeon somewhere. This means that no matter where you go in the dungeon, the dungeon heart spawner is going to be active and trying to to spawn more mobs. But it doesn't just keep spawning a single mob type. Instead, it's going to keep randomly choosing a mob from one of these spawner rooms as its next potential spawn. So for instance, if you have a tier 4 dungeon with a spider's nest, a skeleton boneyard, a zombie crypt, and maybe a witch laboratory, then those are the four potential mobs that will spawn from the dungeon heart each spawn cycle. Oh, also, and this is probably the most important change, all spawners inside this dungeon ignore light levels and are much harder to break, so it's going to take a lot more than a couple of torches to keep yourself safe in here. So obviously with this increased difficulty, we need to increase the level of loot that the players can get as well. For now, I decided to copy the loot tables from the end cities, but modify them a bit. Basically, I made it so that tier one and tier two dungeons will only have enchanted iron tools, while a tier three and tier four dungeon will have fully enchanted diamond gear. And while I believe this is a decent starting point for the loot, I believe that if this was implemented in the game for real, I would definitely introduce a new, useful, very rare item that only spawns in these dungeon chests. That would give you a lot of incentive to team up with your friends and go out exploring the world, because let's face it, that is what this game needs the most right now. So there you have it. This is my version of what I think dungeons should be upgraded to in vanilla Minecraft. And if you want to try this out for yourself, I have included a link in the description, as always, to the jar file, and it is going to work for Forge version 1. 1.14.4. Now, obviously, many things could still be added to this mod, but I want to hear from you guys. What types of rooms would you add? What kind of new unique loot item would you add to give incentive to come explore here? What would you do differently than I did? And what would you add to make it even better than what I did? Let me know in the comments. And as always, guys, I really appreciate you watching the What If series. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys next time.